The biggest balancing update to humankind just dropped. Alongside it, Da Vinci was given an avatar, and the merchants came out way happier and wealthier than we could have ever thought. Look at that ability. My God. In this update, I'll be covering everything. Not just the pages and pages of fixes, some community-inspired, but crucially, the key updates. Let's begin. First and foremost, in my update video from earlier this morning, where I quickly covered off this, what I thought would be the key change, the old versions of the builder and scientist abilities have been completely revamped and largely nerfed. Here you can see the old versions. You can implement it on as many cities as you like. The land raiser, the industrial ability, converts all of your money and science into industry. The scientific one allowed you to basically insta-complete the tech tree by enacting it on all of your cities, converting all of their industry and money to powerful resources all into science. It was broken, it broke the tech tree, it broke the balance of the entire game. In this update, and first and foremost, time cards below, they've fixed it. The collective mind scientist ability and the land raiser builder abilities have been given the same treatment. Now, they can only be applied to one city at a time, and they have a cooldown. This is massive. On normal speed, it's a 10 turn cooldown, so even if you deactivate the ability, you can't use it again on any other city for another 10 turns. Here you can see on blitz speed, it's scaled down to three and two turns respectively, but it doesn't matter. Either way, these abilities have been pummeled into the ground. Now, instead of using it on 10 cities at a time, you can only use it on one. That's a significant nerf to it, the overall power balance of the game, and it will likely significantly put back all of the scientists and all of the industrial cultures, some in particular, like the French. I won't dwell too much more on this. I've covered it in a separate video if you want more of a deep dive, but that is it in a nutshell. These guys have been dropped, and in their place ascends the Aesthetes and the Merchants. Let's start with the Aesthetes first of all. Their ability, which has been traditionally used to immediately bring back one of your empire's territories, you'll see some gameplay of that in a minute, into your sphere of influence, stopping that pesky spreading of civics, stopping your opponent from forcing you to change the civics. You use your cultural blitz ability traditionally to spend around one part gold to receive one part influence, so 60 gold nets you 60 influence, sometimes doubled at about 120, and the territory will likely convert into your societal sphere of influence. It's traditionally been a relatively useful ability to converting a territory and maybe getting a one for one or one for two conversion on gold. Look at how it's changed. This thing is incredibly powerful. It scales up as always with the number of territories that border you, the number of empires bordering you. So it's more powerful on those bordering territories, particularly where you don't have influence. And the change rate is absurd. This also scales with errors. So as you move through, this will only get more crazy. This was around the early mid game in the classical era. And I was getting a 10x changeover from my money to my influence. This is an incredible buff. Absurdly powerful. It's a must use ability every time. The merchants also saw a similar lovin. Here is a merchant, Swahili, moving through into the medieval era. Its ability traditionally has been a little bit more complicated. It's called Power Investor, and basically you can use it on a resource deposit around the map, whether you control it or not, but it does need to be owned by someone, whether it's a barbarian, whether it's an opponent or an ally, it doesn't matter. Or even in your own cities, you can use the Power Investor and at the cost of a little bit of influence, usually around 100, you can turn any resource into a fully improved resource extractor. You can connect any resource you like using this wonderful power investor ability. And that's traditionally all that it's been used for. You'll see some examples of me panning around this map, finding different ones as I look throughout. It's traditionally useful for cases such as you having a city and wanting to connect a resource. You can do it like I just did there on a territory with influence, and you should still do that, by the way. But useful for connecting resources on cities. Maybe you use it on an independent city, on a tribe, to buy their resource and curry a little extra favor in them, some six per turn. Or you could use it on an ally or an opponent. Buy their resource, connect it, and get access to it. You might also have to trade with them. The new power of this ability, in the same way that the merchant ability has been buffed, plays out in two ways. Sometimes this is building on existing mechanics, but man, they have scaled the buffing up significantly. It works in two instances. Firstly, it scales by error. Now much more than ever. Take a look at that. My God. 
My God, this thing is good. Look, here it is again. 2,000 bucks for 100 influence. All I have to do is use it on an already connected resource that I'm already trading for because the second way that this powerful ability scales is per instance. In the case of merchant abilities, it's per number of them connected, number of trade routes connected, saffron, whatever it might be. And so in those instances that you were witnessing before, here again, where I'm making thousands of gold for trading off but 100 influence is because of a highly connected, a highly uh, trade friendly empire trading with me. We have lots of trade routes established. We have lots of that specific trade route established. And I can use this puppy on a normal turn timer once every 10 turns, converting 100 influence into 4,000 gold for me. And also it's important to note 2,000 for them. So do keep that in mind. You'll also be pumping a lot of gold into those who you choose to use this ability on. Could be a great way to pump up weak empires, toadies, potential allies, or you could utilize this in multiplayer as well. We'll be streaming multiplayer live here on my channel, a community multiplayer event at 9 p.m. GMT on Friday. So do join us for that. Moving swiftly along, and we have the Leonardo the Da Vinci event itself. It comes with six challenges, and I think they've really nailed it this time. Let's jump in and have a look at the challenges and see if that assessment plays through. There are two different chapters. They're not time limited. We have about 25 days to complete everything. Flight of the Birds is to own a biplane in the early modern era. Joseon should be able to help you with that. Machines of War, destroy the fortifications of 10 tiles. Looks like you're going to be pillaging during your upcoming games. And then also to round out the first chapter, we have own a city netting 1,000 industry and 1,000 science per turn. Two yields that have been nerfed, their affinity abilities at least considerably nerfed, but you should still be able to pull this off. Choose an industrialist through your game, choose a scientist through your game, and by the contemporary era, this one should be able to be completed. Even with those affinity abilities being nerfed, I think that's fine. We do have the whole event period to complete these challenges, these chapters. Those are the challenges for chapter one. Moving through to chapter two, I think it's a similar balance. It will require us to <laughs> potentially take on different playstyles we haven't tried before, but they're not too difficult. They're not impossible this time, which is really nice. Uh, moving into the second chapter of the challenge as the Venetians in era number four, you have to trigger the science end game condition. There might be a little bit of setup involved for that one, but I think you can absolutely pull it off with a strong industrial and scientist game in the early game. You should be able to move through as Venice. Own a city with six cultural wonders or a wonder from all six eras. Again, should be fairly easy, but you'll have to plan ahead a little bit. Make sure you've got one city, your wonderful city, and a high enough influence yield that you can buy access to a wonder each time. And then finally, max out all four ideological axes on either side during the same game. This one can be achieved through your civics for the most part, but also take care when you're enacting events uh, or being forced to change civics potentially by an aggressive neighbor. Overall, I think they've really nailed this event and the Da Vinci AI persona. I mean, I'm not just speaking out of jealousy. Hashtag give Da Vinci a persona would be a hashtag that I would push on their Twitter page because that persona is sexy. Complete all of the challenges, all six challenges within this active event over the next 25 days, and you will unlock Da Vinci as well as a few sort of border themes and those other uh, largely cosmetic additions. Either way, I think this is a wonderful event, but our changes aren't over yet. Important changes came to the religious system as well in two ways. Firstly, when we actually choose a religion now, it's upfronted. It's much more clear. You should not move through eras and not have a historical religion selected like I have done since the beginning of time and since humankind released in August of last year. You'll also notice as you move through the game, the AI will choose a religion better now as well. You can see here they all are. I've renamed mine. They haven't done so with theirs. But either way, they will pick one a line in line with historical flavors. And you'll see that they're grayed out on the selection screen. So as soon as somebody picks it, you can't repick it. It is just a name and an image for a holy site, but it matters. The AI will also take better advantage of this. So the AI behaviors have been improved here as well to better utilize religion and the historical flair. Speaking of flair, the other big sort of important change that was flagged in this update comes to notifications. Down the bottom here in a game, you can see you can enable or disable certain categories of uh, notification. This is great to reduce notification spam. Love to see it. If you enable or disable something and you forget or you're not quite sure what it is or where it is, you can also jump into the options screen and enable and disable each one. Empire notifications, map notifications, 
Perhaps it's ones around trade or religion. It's nice to actually be able to utilize the notification system in game. And now we can streamline it much more. So thank you, Amplitude, for improving your wonderful game. There were a whole host of fixes and improvements and all sorts. Most notable ones to me were uh, sweeping changes to the AI. The way that AI handles its cities and stability has been improved. No more zombie rebel outbreaks. They'll also better utilize their affinities, which have been significantly changed in this update. Manage their economies better. I've noticed they are much more ready to trade and much more willing to trade. That will help them a lot. Uh, and finally, improved culture decisions as well. So as they move through eras, they should be making better decisions rather than just hanging around as the Olmecs in the classical era for whatever reason. A few key things were fixed and tweaked throughout as well, including improvements to the AI and the glitch that let you build two harbors as the Swahili has been nerfed. You'll now have to wait until you move through to get the neutral harbor instead of getting both. Uh, loads of other fixes, which you can check in the patch notes. I will, as always, have them linked below. Let's summarize what we've learned at the end of this video here. This patch is probably the most significant patch humankind's ever received. I say that not as clickbait, but because it is probably more important than any other. Builder and scientist cultures have been significantly nerfed across the board, especially in the late game, using their ability on one city instead of 15 or 10 is literally 10 or 15 times worse. I mean, that is massive. Will they still be good? Yes, of course, because the yields are still good. Certain ones will be hit harder than others, like the French. But by and large, I think this is the meta shift that we needed. Consider then the massive power shift that's gone in favor of the merchant and aesthetic culture abilities. They are now, I would say, a must use all the time, every time on cooldown. More so than even the abilities of builders and scientists. I think that's reshaped the meta in ways that only future testing will tell. I'll be testing it tomorrow in a Humankind Community Multiplayer game, and I will of course continue my Humankind coverage as we move through. And with loads of fixes and improvements to the AI, to notifications, and to religion, I think that this update's a really, really good one. Like I say, I'll be testing it more, so do subscribe and hang around. Maybe cheekily like the video while you're here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody, and enjoy Humankind Update Day.